So a nice little reversal set up here this morning on AMD. A nice little high volume fake out with a kind of reversal candle in the largest volume standard of the week on overbought price action. So look for a reversal on the 10 minute time frame and a pullback ended up getting about 1% of follow through. Did some things good on this trade, did some things bad on this trade. A little bit rushed on my entry, I think, or could have gotten a better one for sure, which maybe would have made me hold on. But ultimately, a 1% move after waiting for it, I'll take all day long. All right, so still watching here, right? I want to see an overreaction, basically fake out higher. Like I said, around 110.71 ish. My original entry idea. So we were looking at this AMD uh, maybe 10 minutes prior to this for an entry again around that 111.71. And I wasn't able to, to get one there. So on this pullback, as this trade kind of gets back into play, I'm essentially just making sure that these bulls aren't overwhelming the selling pressure that we sort of established there. So I want to make sure that they get kind of trapped and crushed above sort of that fake out high or above that sort of second red candles high, which is why I set my entry price for that 1071. So essentially I was looking for that reaction first to make sure they're stuck. And then once they are, then I'm happy to go for that trend continuation narrative. Okay, so watching closely here, right? Watching closely. Unsense away, give or take. Okay, watching, watching, watching. Give it a sec. I want to see the fake out above that wick, pretty much. Okay, watch, watch, watch. So this is a very fine line between absorption and rejection. And so I'm just making sure that this isn't absorption at those highs that's then going to push up towards, let's say, that 111.30. So just being as patient as I possibly can be just to make sure that all the buying pressure does get wiped out here and bears have essentially a clean slate to push price action down from. Watching. I feel like I got that fake out, right? So next little pop, I want to fade. All right, guys, I am in average price, 110.71, 110.71. One. So watching this back, I don't think I got the perfect entry here where I, I kind of said that 10, 110.71 pretty early on in my process. And I think I actually got a little bit emotionally attached to that price. Like I had set up waiting on my pending order for a long time. And so I, I basically didn't want to miss it. And I think that made me kind of front run seeing that extra little pop. So it's not that I got lucky here, but I think I definitely got okay, so bailed out from an early break down here. I'd like to see some immediate follow through, but so far so good. Oh, or today. Okay, here we go. Here we go. See if we get a bit more. Get back under the, like that 40 shelf and things get fun. Right, pretty low volume, so not worried. I think right there was the first sign where I, I think I probably noticed that I was early on my entry. So the me calling for a profit or saying, hey, it's looking good when I'm two cents up kind of means that uh, I feel anxious about it, right? So um, yeah, I definitely think that's confirmation I had the, the wrong entry timing. Hindsight, maybe that uh, 81 would have been a better entry 10 cents later. I think I only saw it once. That 110.71 was stuck in my head. Ah, that should be okay.
I think this probably should have been my entry right here. Uh, I just couldn't talk myself into waiting just a little bit longer. That's really uh. right. So that's the fake out higher there that I should have gotten. So yeah, I, ultimately, like I am kind of picking at straws here a little bit, but this was the the trap I wanted to make sure that was set. And it's a logical one to have then waited for because we saw a really weak bulls kind of pull back inside bar. So we don't expect them to sustain this move higher. So we should have just waited that extra two, three minutes. And I think that would have removed a lot of the anxiety on that trade. So yeah, um, I think probably a, a situation where I should have been a little bit more specific. And I think I got a little bit to attach the early entry price. So what I want to do here going forward is next time I miss a setup is to essentially reset my order window and bring up all those parameters again so that I don't create that bias for myself. Yeah, 470. Yeah, see if we can now start to break down five cents from the entry price. But yeah, I didn't like how I felt like maybe my entry wasn't correct. I think I'm getting good cooperation market wise. Let's see. Yeah, it should be, but you have to search it up as advanced micro devices. Yeah, I search them up by the company name, not the ticker name. If you go um, to this link here, pop it in the uh, YouTube chat, as a list of all the 1500 different products you can trade. Again, search it up by the company name, not the ticker. Hey, come on, AMD. Anyone else send this with me? Anyone? Nice, Ruben. Very nice. All right, guys, we're getting pretty close to that first profit target, right? I'm going to be pretty aggressive here, same like yesterday. I'm going to close a little bit off here at that 110.40, 110 110.40. Right? And uh, remember, it's a buy to close order or a market order for a pending, right? If you're using, don't go short too, too often. So about five cents away from the profit target. A little bit later in the day, right? So generally the later it is in the day, the more aggressive I want to be in managing this. Because the volume disappears and the signals can kind of just end up into nothingness, right? Mm, don't do this. Don't, 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 don't. What I wanted to see.
I felt a bit like a fake out there, right? So let's double check, sanity check here. Brian, yeah, yeah, that should be a trade you then don't take, right? 1042, far too late, man. Let's say you're, right, that's about from here. So at that point, right, you're risking about 90 cents to make about a dollar 80. Like you're not getting the appropriate risk reward to justify to take that trade. So I would say that's be one that you should not be taking. Right, the point or the reason why we set that fib line, right, or set those fib targets is so that we know the appropriate risk reward zone to justify an entry. So anything really less than that, and you have a you do not have a positive expectation of making money on that trade. So when that trade comes together, right, you lose less if we're wrong and you make less if we're right. And so ultimately, right, that ratio kind of screws you over. So please set your fibs or set your risk reward zone and be specific in your entry targeting or your entry price because we don't want to be taking trades where the math is essentially working against us. And in your context from your entry price, the math is 100% working against you. At best, without any human error, you're expected to remain exactly in the same place PL wise. You're expected to basically make a dollar for every dollar that you lose. And there's no edge there. So you need to be very, very specific and deliberate about those entries. Because that 40 cents difference or that 30 cents difference is a huge difference over the course of thousands of trades. So that's why we don't chase trades, right? And why we set pending orders and why we work backwards to find our entry price so that we don't get that 30 cents difference, right? Your job or what you shouldn't be doing is waiting for me to say that I'm in a trade before jumping in. I should not be your confirmation to then jump in because what's always going to happen is you're always going to get a worse fill for me and you're always going to then be behind my like basic performance, right? Dude, this was a fib entry, d -Wayne. Right? The fib was like 110.68. I got in 110.71. Like this, I think, right? So you can exactly see. We did it yesterday, right, Dwayne? But we're gonna say when we do that, right? Sometimes there'll be scenarios we want to buy fake outs, sure, right? But this wasn't one of those scenarios. We're pulling back, right, for our entry, right? But on this trade, I, I literally said my entry price. Like, I, I said what the target was. So, hey, it's, yeah, hard for me to say. Hey, it's hard for me to accept that you would have then gotten a 30 cent worse entry. Like, that is a really, a really disappointing process. Because there's no reason for that to happen, right? It means that you weren't uh, setting up your trade quit, like well enough, right? So, like, the muscle memory or the structure around how you're using your broker software just isn't there. So I need to practice that sort of execution timing, right? That sort of flow a little bit more. To avoid that because, yeah, that 30 cents is, is honestly catastrophic. All right, 10.51. That makes sense, Brian. Okay, again, right, watching that 40 level. 
Ah, uh, that, that might be a bit greedy, it feels like. Okay, so watching here still, right? Watching, watching, watching. I don't want to get out. I'm here 10.52. I'm giving it a minute. But yeah, like if I'm wrong on my entry, and I, I was right in this context because I wasn't green right away, but I've spent a lot of time waiting for this trade to break down. So wrong on my entry. What else was I wrong about, right? So I'm starting to ask myself that a little bit. Haven't gotten the follow through that I expect. Oh, I think I can talk myself into it. Okay, keep waiting, keep waiting. I'm gonna wait for this candle to close. If it doesn't give me a close under these lows, I'm out. So yeah, just at this point, a lot of the price action is starting to compound and make me feel like it's not gonna give me as much follow through as I expect, right? So my entry timing wasn't exactly correct. The amount of follow through that I've gotten through or since my entry hasn't exactly been spectacular. And so I don't want to now get too emotionally attached to this decision. So I'm essentially altering my plan or defining what that next step of bearish continuation looks like here. And I wanted to see a low under sort of that green candle. If I couldn't get that, then I knew that bears weren't gonna or haven't kind of reclaimed control in that spot. And I would need to sort of get out or should get out before that trade sort of reverses against me. And before I get too emotionally attached where it's more challenging for me to say that my thesis was incorrect. On. Hey, it's being see a 49 here. Brian, it's coming for you. Okay, watching closely here, right? Five cents away, three cents away. Gonna close half of my position. Hey, okay, trying to get a fill here, right? Trying to get a fill. 110.40, 110.40. And some off. All right, there we go, guys. Let's go. All right. And bears didn't disappoint, right? They made a lower low. We de risked and we made it easy to hold on to this trade for longer. All right, stop losses at my entry price as well. I'm not letting this thing pull back. I either have or got it right directionally, maybe not timing wise. But I'm not letting this thing go red now. So we'll see if this thing can keep breaking down. Feel pretty good. Feel better now that I've de-risked. But yeah, great trade, everybody. Hopefully a few of you guys are still in this. Brian, hope you get a bit of follow through under that uh, 1040. But I will try to de-risk here at some point if you can. All right, guys. All right, here we go. Another day of patient trading paying off. With the alliteration. Anyone still in this with me here? Who's in this with me? Talk dirty to me, baby. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Well done, Ruben. Nice work, Joel K. What was your final scale out? Nice, Austin. Let's go. Guys, next target here is going to be 110. And I'll close a half of what I have left.
And then, like I said, right, stop loss is at my entry price. Well, we'll make it funnier. We'll make my stop loss 110.69. What's your first profit target, Dwayne? Moving slow, so like there's a little bit of a bias to just take it. Sounds good, Joel K. Sounds good. Yeah, let's like I, I know I'm a bit of a grumpy prick on here sometimes. But we can control our execution timing. We can control those variables. So let's make sure that those are perfect, right? that's going to be a really big difference between sort of how well you actually execute in your evaluation or in your real trading account right like that's the difference between being able to replicate your back test and being able to kind of match your stress test okay so we need to like focus on the processes around how to make those entries a little bit smoother that's a great thing for us to focus on and a fun thing, because like once once that technique is kind of where you want it to be, it is smooth like butter. Huh. <laughs> uh, I have to laugh at myself here. I feel like um, this is definitely a character flaw here at this point. But it definitely feels like it's like a uh, significant mood changing moment when I'm in entry protection mode. Like the, uh, <laughs> the stuff that I say, like the, the kind of like uh, verbal diarrhea that comes out of my mouth is a little bit looser when it's uh, in entry protection mode. It just reminds me like <laughs> the one pretty much the one website that wasn't uh blocked when, we, when i worked on the desk was the daily mail which is like the world's trashiest news website and so in those situations where you're just like managing a winning trade you'd be on the daily mail trying to find like the most ridiculous garbage to possibly read to be entertained by it was all like all up to date on the big brother Love Island, all the UK drama, knew all the celebrities. <laughs> what a world. All right, so let's see if this thing has that next leg down, right? 110 is the next profit target, about 25 cents away. Not sure if I'll have the stomach to hold for that long. But oh, nice to be back on that winning feeling. No, not really, Joel. I feel like I don't have the edge to, to trade the afternoon. I used to stream all day, but I found that um, people would expect me to trade in the afternoon when I didn't have any looks. And so that would generate frustration for them because they'd be watching and nothing would be happening. It was pretty annoying, obviously. Um, but yeah, like, I, it, and then it also felt like I was just draining my mental capital for no reason. So I'd rather spend those times doing one-on-one -on -one calls with you guys instead of trading. We all get more out of that.
yeah, it just doesn't feel like it does anything extra. And to be honest, right, like my goal isn't to work all day. More to life than that. As much as I love trading, there's more to life than that. So if I'm self-employed and I'm putting myself in situations where I'm constantly working 16 hours a day, I'll have a lot more income stability going back working for a hedge fund. All right, guys, two cents away from my profit target. Going to close uh, half of what I have left. Let's go, everybody. A little bit of a sloppy setup. Got out uh, 109.95. Let's go. Look, I didn't like my entry on this trade, but I like how I followed my plan and stuck to it. So B plus all in. Congratulations, everybody. Nice little ripper. Oh, best feeling in the world. Stop loss, uh, still at my entry price. Anyone still in this? You Wayne, hopefully that's uh you you scaled out some of your profit target. Let's go, Ruben. Let's go. First scale out was one eleven forty. Nice work, Austin. Really well done, man. Yeah, so now we're risk-free. Hopefully we can run this thing down towards low of day would be awesome. Yeah, those trades, right, where we have to wait for exhausted bears or we're looking for that BB reversal, kind of seems like we get paid out on those, like 1030-ish. Yesterday, right, we entered in right at 10.30. Today, 10.37. Uh, and Steven, if you um, want to see the scale outs, it should also, also always be in the uh, the Discord and the setup alerts. Or I'll, I walk through kind of how I'm managing my position and stuff like that. So you definitely could here, Clark. Um, what I have personally found in my own trading results is that I tend to push my stop loss up too aggressively once I'm at risk free. So that very often actually just leads me to leaving a lot of money on the table that I don't need to do. Um, so I've personally found that from the way I trade and like kind of my personal strengths and weaknesses that I ultimately do better if I just leave that at entry price once I've scaled out half my position. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like it's 
the more important thing i think in in that context more is just to do the same thing every single time because it does often feel like really the idea here is just to avoid as much confusion as possible right if on some trades i push my stop loss really aggressively or on other trades i don't then on trades where it's not clear what i should do i probably end up doing the one thing I shouldn't or like I hesitate and I take my time and I make a decision that maybe isn't as profitable as it could be. So for me, it's more about uh, yeah being consistent because then at the very least, okay, I know these pros and cons. I can kind of live with them. I can get used to them and learn how to manage them and all, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, see if this thing can break down or I mean, it seems a little bit like the market might be a tad stuck here, right? Or we're stuck in consolidation. So I don't know how aggressive I need to be. Annoying. Yeah, not a bad little week we're putting together for ourselves here, eh, guys? Back to business. Let's go. What a feeling. So again, right, just watching to see if this thing pulls back towards my stop loss. If it does, it does. No big deal. If it doesn't, happy to hold on to this. Yeah, man, that's why, I mean, 
exactly what you just described there, Dwayne, is why I started trading stocks instead. Because on those trades where it sometimes takes a long time to develop and it stops me out on options, I would make a lot more money trading stocks basically on those plays. Yeah, this thing might pull back, whatever, but it just makes it so much easier to manage my, my position. Okay, it might get stopped out here in a second. Don't want to see it pull back much higher. All right, guys, I got stopped out protecting entry there.